So what is an effectual fervent prayer? Find out tonight as we get into the Word. Well, thank you for tuning in again tonight and uh, joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, we sure had a great service on this past Sunday morning. Had a great turnout and had a great time under the pavilion. And uh, we just enjoyed that. But I'm glad you're with us again tonight. And I want to look at a verse in James chapter number 5. James chapter number 5. And while you're turning there, don't forget now this Sunday, we begin our spiritual warfare conference. And um, with that thought in mind, I want to kind of talk about prayer tonight. And it's something we really need to be uh, focusing on more and more in these last days. Uh, you know, there's only so much we can do in the arm of the flesh. Uh, the Bible says the arm of the flesh will fail you. But God never fails, amen? And I'm glad prayer moves the arm that moves the world. And so we want to talk about prayer tonight, specifically an effectual, fervent prayer. Well, what is that? Let's look in James chapter 5 and look at verse, um, James chapter 5 and verse number 16. The Bible says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now think about that. S Satan hates nothing more than prayer. And he fights no one more than praying Christians. You know why? Because when we pray, we enter into his domain. We take ground back that was given to Satan and he doesn't like that. And so James here says that there is a special kind of prayer that really gets God's attention. It uses the words, it availeth much. Well, what kind of prayer is that? It's a, an effectual, fervent prayer. That, that word uh, availeth, it means to be strong. It means to have power. So what it says is, if you want to have power with God, if you really want a prayer that's going to uh, be strong and get God's attention, he says uh, it's an effectual, fervent prayer. So the question is, what is an effectual, fervent prayer? In other words, if, if God says that a certain type of, of prayer gets his attention, if a certain type of prayer uh, really uh, causes him to respond, I want to know what it is. How about you? And so, um, so what does it mean to pray an effectual, fervent prayer? Well, let's look here in, in uh, James chapter 5, and this, word, this verse, uh, verse 16, we're going to see some descriptions of, of, uh, of an effectual fervent prayer. I believe, first of all, number one, the effectual fervent prayer uh, means sinless praying. It means sinless praying. You notice what it says in verse, uh, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. In other words, you, you and I can't pray as long as we have sin in our lives, right? Uh, we must confess sin. Someone said that prayer will keep you from sin and sin will keep you from prayer, right? And so if there is sin in your life, you need to confess it to God. Um, if you sin against someone, you need to go and confess it to them. You know, confession should always be uh, and only be as wide as the sin. Now, what does that mean, preacher? Well, if we, if we sin secretly, if someone sins in their home and no one knows about it, then they don't need to tell anybody. They just need to go and tell God. They just need to confess it to God. On the other hand, on the other hand, if they sin against a, another person uh, and that person knows it, then they, they ought to go to that person and make things right with them as well as God. Um, if they sin publicly, then they ought to repent publicly, confess it publicly. That way people know that they know they sinned and they got things right. But it only needs to be as wide uh, as the circle of, of sin, of, of knowledge of that sin. Matthew 5, 23 says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Uh, Psalm 66, verse 18, um, David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So it's important to, to understand that an effectual, fervent prayer means a prayer that's prayed without sin. You can't really get a hold of God as long as there's sin in your heart. Um, and, and that's what he said. David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, 
if I allow it to, to keep going and keep on growing. See, uh, sin is like a cancer that's undiagnosed and undealt with or untreated. It will just continue to grow and grow until it, uh, it kills you spiritually. And, and unconfessed sin will affect you. And uh, so it affects not only your heart, it affects God's hearing. Did you, did you catch that? David said, uh, he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, does that mean that God goes deaf? No. What it means is God will not, will not. He chooses to not hear you. He chooses to not give you a hearing. Isn't it amazing how many times people, uh, they want sin to remain in their lives, but then they want God to still bless them. And they want to go to God and ask Him for this blessing or that blessing, or God do this or that for me. God says, I'm not going to give you a hearing. As long as you have sin in your life, I'm not going to hear what you have to say. Get that sin right, and then you'll open up the passageway where I'm willing to hear you and answer your prayer. So I believe, uh, first of all, number one, effectual fervent prayer is sinless praying. Number two, I believe it means specific praying. It means specific praying. It says in verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer. Now, that word prayer is, is referring to a specific prayer request that's made. A specific. You know, I'm afraid a lot of times we don't, we don't get as specific in our praying as God wants us to be. I think we sometimes pray too generalized of prayers. You know what I'm saying? Just sometimes we just kind of uh, get very general. But, but to pray fervently, like he's talking about here, to pray fervently is to pray specifically. Think about that. In other words, specific answers require specific requests. See, the, the more general you pray, uh, the less you're going to know when a prayer is answered. But the more specific you pray, the more specific the answer will be, and you'll know when God answers that prayer. It's interesting when you read uh, down here in verses, uh, verse 17 and 18. Look what it says here in James 5 and verse 17. He gives us a an example of a specific prayer that is prayed. James 5 verse 17 says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So what do we see there? We see Elijah praying a very specific prayer. He said, I, I, I don't want any rain to come. And rain was withheld. Then later he prayed for rain, and rain came. So two very, uh, very specific prayers, and God answered those, and Elijah knew that. And so when you pray, I want to encourage you to pray specifically for things. Let me give you another example. Don't, don't just say, well, Lord, uh, Lord, bless the world. Man, that's very generic. Very generic. Uh, be specific. If there's a certain person that needs God's blessings, well, what kind of blessings do they need? Tell God. Be specific with it. Uh, for instance, if you're going to pray for the pastor, and I hope you pray for your pastor, please, I need you to pray for me. But if you pray for the pastor, don't just say, well, Lord, bless the pastor. Uh, no, be specific. You say, well, what should I pray for specifically? Lord, bless him as he studies. Open his mind to the Word of God. Give him clarity of thought. Help him to, to get truths from your Word to give to us. Feed his soul so he can feed our spirit. And, and keep his mind from distraction while he's preaching. You know, people don't think about that, but a lot of things can be distracting to a preacher when he's trying to preach. And when you're in the, battling in the spiritual realm and you're communicating spiritual truth, there is a spiritual enemy that comes against you. And he'll, he'll bring all kinds of thoughts and distracting thoughts or, or, or maybe a baby or a person doing this or that, whatever it could be. They, they don't mean anything by it, but it could be a distraction to the preacher. And so that's a way you could pray, Lord, keep his mind from distraction. You know, don't, don't pray, Lord, meet everybody's needs. Oh, that's general. Pray specific. Lord, John needs a job. Lord, I pray you'd give John the right job. Or, or Lord, old Debbie, now she's sick and she needs a healing. Lord, she needs a touch and here's what's wrong. And Lord, I pray you'd bring healing to her body. Be, be specific. Why? Because an effectual, fervent prayer is a specific prayer. Number three, it means the effectual, fervent prayer is a spirit-filled prayer prayer. It's spirit-filled praying. An effectual fervent prayer is led by the Spirit. Here's what the Bible says about prayer in, in Romans 8 and verse 26. It says, 
Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Isn't that great? Now verse 27 says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Isn't that great? And so really our praying ought to be led by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because only the Holy Spirit knows really what we ought to be praying for. Well, that's what this verse says. It says, uh, um, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Can I make a confession to you? There's a lot of times I've gone in prayer and started praying and I had no idea what I needed to pray for. Have you ever been there? I mean, uh, uh, I've been in, in emergency situations, um, been in a hospital with someone or something tragic happened all of a sudden and, and all of a sudden I need to pray and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, what do I pray? What do I need to pray for? And uh, sometimes we don't know what we ought to be praying for, but the Holy Spirit does. And the Holy Spirit can give us um, the prayer that we need to pray back to God. And the great thing is the Holy Spirit always knows the will of God because the Holy Spirit is God. So the Holy Spirit gives us a prayer to pray back to God. And so when you pray God's prayer back to Him, you can be 100% sure He's going to answer it because it's His prayer to begin with. Isn't that great? And so uh, effectual, fervent prayer, it means spirit-filled praying. Now, what does that mean again? Well, a spirit-filled prayer will be in agreement with the Word of God. God will never lead you to pray uh, contrary to His Word. And so God's Spirit will never lead you to pray contrary to His Word as well. And so it's a, a Spirit-filled prayer will be in agreement with the Word of God, and, and the Spirit-filled prayer will also be in agreement with the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything, here it is, according to His will, He heareth us. Isn't that great? Why? Wow because it is a spirit-led prayer. Uh, so if it's a spirit-led prayer, it, it came from the Holy Spirit back to God, so we know it's according to His will. And so uh, it, it must be a, a prayer led by the Holy Spirit, and it must come from a righteous man. Isn't that what the Bible, the Bible says here, James five sixteen? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me give you number four. Number four, the effectual fervent prayer, it means serious praying. It's serious praying. You know, uh, a mother who is praying for someone else's child to be healed um, will not pray as fervently as she would be praying for her child to be healed. Right? If, if you're praying for another, another person's child who is uh, in danger of, of dying, you'd be serious and be praying but it would still be another level of praying if it was your child that was about to die, right? And so the, the English word there, fervent, um, means impassioned. It means forceful, passionate, heartfelt, powerful, and wholehearted. And so uh, it ought to be a passionate, powerful prayer. That's what an effectual, fervent prayer was. And then, again, he gives us that example in verse number 17 of Elijah. Now notice what it says. There's a word that sticks out in this verse, verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. That reminds us that, listen, you think you have a hard time praying sometimes? You think the devil fights you in your prayer life? It fought Elijah too. He was a man of like passions. That means he, he had the same susceptibility to temptations that you and I have. And so uh, uh, that, that, that encourages me to, to know that, you know what? Uh, I, I, Elijah, he faced the same battles. So it says he was a man subject to like passions as we are. And notice this, he prayed earnestly. That's that word, uh, fervent. He prayed fervent. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Now that, that doesn't mean he, just, he prayed one time and gave up. Man, he, can, he continued. He was serious in his praying uh, that, that it would not rain. He was, he was serious. So let me ask you this. How seriously do you pray when you pray? Do we, do we spend enough time with God each day to even get serious? We wonder sometimes why God allows things to come in our lives, tragedy and, and trouble. It could be because God needs us to get serious. We've not gotten serious with Him. God wants us to pray serious. Elijah was serious. Daniel, when he was thrown into the den of lions, 
do you think he did some serious praying? <laughs> I do. I'd be praying. I've been praying very seriously right then. Amen. And and he did. How serious do you think Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prayed so serious, the Bible says that his sweat his, became as great drops of blood. That's pretty serious, isn't it? So if you do not have earnestness in your praying, um, then don't expect God to be earnest in answering your prayers. Did you get that? If you're not going to be earnest in praying your prayers, you can't expect God to be earnest in answering your prayers. Let me give you number five. The effectual fervent prayer also means steadfast praying. The effectual fervent prayer is not a one and done prayer. And you know, it's, it's, it's easy to get discouraged when we pray and to quit praying, doesn't it? It's, it's easy to think, I've been praying and praying and God hasn't answered and why do I keep going? Uh, why do I keep, keep this prayer? Um, well, I'm gonna tell you something, using the analogy as I did a moment ago with a mother whose child is ill or near death, you better believe she doesn't pray for that child uh, to be healed just one time. She's probably pray, praying over and over and for hours and hours uh, until she sees something. She's serious. She's steadfast. Number six, an effectual fervent prayer means supernatural praying. It means supernatural praying. When, when God moves in answer to prayer, something supernatural takes place. Isn't that great? Man, notice what it says in verse 15. It says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. God does not always uh, choose to bring about healing. You know, there's, there are some sickness that's from Satan. Did you know that? Uh, Luke th uh, 13, verse 11, uh, tells us about a, a woman who had an infirmity of 18 years. And uh, when Jesus saw her and called her to him, he said, he told her, he said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Loosed. Why? Because Satan had her bound. It wasn't just a physical thing. It was a spiritual thing here. And, and, it, and uh, the devil had given her this infirmity. And so when um, God healed her, he had to make Satan loose her. So some sickness comes from Satan. Some sickness comes from God's chastening. Now we've got to be very careful. We're not the judge to tell if someone has, is sick because it's from Satan or they're sick because they're under God's judgment. We, we don't know that. We have no right to, to make that judgment on someone's life, but they need to make that judgment on their own life. If, you, if, if a great illness comes into your life, especially something that seems like you cannot get away from, that ought to be one of the first questions you ask. God, is this some sort of chastening? In other words, uh, if there's something in your life that shouldn't be there, some sin that you've not dealt with, that's the first thing you ought to look at is confessing and getting things right with God because it could be his chastening. Um, you know, Miriam, the Bible says, was chastened with leprosy because of her disobedience. Uh, Gehazi, he was chastened because of his greed. God inflicted on him an, an affliction. Psalm 119, 67, David said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. So what he said was, there was a time where I was physically afflicted with an illness or a disease or a sickness because I had strayed from the Lord. It was chastening. And he said, but now I've kept your word. So God does that sometimes because he wants to bring his children back to him and, and they begin to stray and he wants them to come back and keep his word. Now in Deuteronomy, God warned his people that he would chasten them if they lived in sin. Let me read these verses and I'll be done. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 20 says this, The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forgotten me. Verse 21, The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. Wow until he hath consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Verse 22, The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. God said, listen, if you, if you don't uh, uh, obey me and follow me, uh, there will be some sickness, some things that I will bring in chastening in your life. So an effectual fervent prayer means sinless praying, specific praying, spirit-filled praying, serious praying, steadfast praying, 
and supernatural praying when God gets involved. Amen. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you tonight. Again, don't forget this coming Sunday. We're excited. This begins our spiritual warfare conference. And that's what we've been talking about. Some of the devil fights our praying and fights our, our lives living for God. So don't forget now we have uh, two services, two morning services this coming Sunday. This is different. We're going to be in the auditorium, but we'll have two different services. Uh, they'll be at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And uh, we've divided people up and had you uh, uh, sign up for different services. We'll be sending a flock note out as well and reminding you which service you're in. And so please, if you, uh, if you can make it at all, uh, I want you to come. And uh, Dr. Scheidbach will be there and preaching on spiritual warfare. Now, I know that there are quite a few uh, of our elderly and others who have immune deficiencies and things that uh, are compromised that, that are uh, difficult during this time. And listen, we understand that. If you want to come and wear a mask, by all means do that. You're welcome to do that. Uh, you're, it's not required, but you're welcome to do that. Um, some have asked if they could do that. I said, most certainly you do that. If that'll make you feel comfortable. Uh, others uh, still don't feel comfortable coming, and that's okay as well. Uh, listen, we will not think bad of you. If you um, have got a health concern and you need to stay home and watch online, please do that. I would much rather you do that and stay healthy than to try to come or get out and, uh, and somehow get sick, okay? We love our people, and we certainly want you to stay healthy. And so uh, we need you back, amen, when everything is good. So you do what you need to do, but for those who are, are, are healthy and good, we want to see you on Sunday, and we'll see you there at 9 o'clock, and then again, uh, the second service, if you're coming there at 11 a.m., and we'll be practicing social distancing. We'll have pews marked off, and, and we'll be seeing about every other pew, so we'll, you'll have some space to space out there and uh, spread out, okay? All right, well, Lord bless you, and we hope to see you on Sunday morning.